As some of you know, I lived and worked in Nicaragua before coming to the Bay Area in 1998, and then co-founded Faithful Fools with Reverend Kay Jorgensen, who was the social justice minister with this congregation. I arrived in Nicaragua with my Franciscan community in November of 1990. The Sandinistas, the revolutionary movement that governed after they had overthrown the dictator Somoza in 1979, had lost elections earlier that year. A U.S.-backed government was back in place. The Contra War that our government had waged to overthrow the Sandinistas then came to an end, and the country we arrived in was worn down by decades of war. Fifty percent of the population was under the age of 15. Grocery stores were barren from the embargoes. Unemployment and malnutrition were prevalent. Settlements with tin and wooden makeshift shacks were bursting up around the outskirts of Managua as people came to the city seeking employment. At the same time, there was a strength amidst this weariness and, un and an unrelenting determination that was still very palpable. As we came to know people, especially folks who were part of the base Christian communities or coffee, art, or farming cooperatives, we couldn't help but be inspired by the individual and the communal commitment that was still alive. People would tell us stories of the 50-year struggle to overthrow the dictatorship. Once Somoza had left the country, the Sandinistas began to take steps to bring about the changes they had fought for all those years. People from all levels of society participated. They organized a health campaign to eradicate polio and a literacy campaign because nearly 75% of the rural population was illiterate. It is said that 60,000 high school and college-age youth and 30,000 adults were trained and sent throughout the countryside to teach people to read and write. The campesinos and the campesinas would speak to how empowering it was when they learned to write their own name. The music that inspired people in the struggle to overthrow Somoza and to keep fighting throughout the Contra War was still being sung in the churches and could be heard blasting from the stereos in people's homes. The lyrics of the Misa Campesina, the peasant mass, sang of a God who was a liberator, of Jesus as the young person who changed your flat tire at the roadside, of Christ who was risen in every arm outstretched to defend the people against the exploitation of the rulers. In first thinking about today's service, I shared with Sam that I wanted it to be on revolution. I wanted to think and reflect about the fact that here we are 45 years after what is called the triumph and the Sandinista government the liberating force of 1979 has become a dictatorship itself, imprisoning and exiling people, many of whom were their comrades and fought with them in the wars. I think at some level, as you've heard already, a bit of a weary heart I think I was seeking to feel that reviving, invigorating, communal inspiring spirit that I would feel in the plaza in Managua 
when we'd gather every July 19th on the anniversary of the triumph. There was singing and there was dancing. And in the complexity, anger, and pain of the time we are living in right now, in this city and in our world, I long for that energy that comes with singing and dancing and feeling like we're moving as one mass for change. Sam contemplated my title of revolution for a moment and then said, how about we do the service on change? We fools speak of being a community that works for personal and social change. Now, change isn't quite as sexy as revolution, but Sam's suggestion of reflecting on change was right on, for that is what revolution is about making fundamental change, making deep structural change within us and around us. And that is the center of our life and work as faithful fools, rooting ourselves in our belief of the worth and inherent dignity of all people we seek to do fundamental, personal, and social change. As we say in our mission, mission statement, through art, through our educational work with students in schools, through our steady work of advocacy, and in our daily and often years-long work with individuals. And is it also the work that happens here in this congregation? We do the work. We make the changes. Person by person, action by action, meeting by meeting, celebration by celebration. Sam has also said at times that it often feels like this work is like pushing a string uphill, especially as they work with administrators of medical schools or with policymakers and city leaders. Yet they know, and we know, systemic change will only take root if we make the necessary fundamental changes in our lives, in the systems, and that takes time. Ray Soleya, my spiritual teacher, used to look at me and say, T, 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 things take time. And it takes continual commitment. If we don't understand that the work required is from year to year, day to day, generation to generation, then we risk participating in and allowing harmful structures to remain. And we risk that the once oppressed will become the oppressors. So we are here now, and the work is ours to do as faithful fools, as a congregation, as citizens of this city and of this world. It can be exhausting, and hopelessness can nip at our heels. But one major thing I also learned and continue to learn from the people in Nicaragua is that dancing and singing and inspiring and encouraging one another with words and affirmations is essential to keeping our spirit strong for the work that needs to be done. As we heard in Amanda Gorman's story, Change Sings, together we are a chant that rises and rings 
and there is hope where our change sings. This is the revolutionary way.